most of this video because it's a lot easier than typing and I want to edit this quickly so you get to hear me. <laughs> so yeah, at the beginning of week 8 I did a lot of market work for Zine Society mostly. Uh, that did take up a bit of my week. But then we had a guest lecture with Molly and I really liked her work because she uses ink like I like to use and I really like the way that she animates freehandedly with her ink. Uh, it's not relevant for my project right now but I'd like to try that sort of technique out in the future. I don't know if I'll be able to maybe experiment during FMP but I'll see. So this is week eight or the end of week eight and then after that I had a very bad cold for the next week so you're not gonna see the planning or review for week nine or week ten really because that was that week was a bit of a write-off <laughs> but this is within like week nine and maybe the beginning of week ten but you'll see my week ten to-do list soon. So my technique for colouring in my comic is going to be uh, the same technique that I used for my animation during the Condiv unit, which is to use traditional media and textures and then scan them in and basically cut them out in Procreate and just use those textures and nothing else. It's a really fun technique that I like to use. I'm, I'm still developing it, but I thought this comic would be a nice way to, to keep playing with it. So here I'm painting different textures and different colours for different parts of my comic. I made a list of the types of textures I wanted to make first beforehand. I looked at the line work that I'd already done and thought about what textures and colours I might want that line work to have. And then I painted them. <laughs> and then after that I'm going to scan them in and I'll use them when I'm making my finals. This is another market. This was my first ever market outside of uni where I sold my own artwork and I th so I thought it was something I could add in. It was a really nice day. It was fun to be with my friends in Boscombe selling all, all of our artwork. Oh, you can put the gun down, like, just, yeah, relax. And you're like, you're like, what? It's a wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Working in, <laughs> in this town. I, I want to, like, pass the, the iPad to you, but my hands are so full, like, no, I, that's fine. I am holding <laughs> You look back and you look up angrily. 
Just, just, it's just my face, right? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look like you squinting. I don't, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be over the taller. <laughs> so I need to think. Yeah, that way. No, it doesn't look like you've lost. Like <laughs> no, I only my glasses. I'm really too old. <laughs> Oh no, I didn't move. I moved the camera too quickly, too fast. So those were some fun clips. I thought I might add them in just to add a bit of comedy. <laughs> anyway, this is the week 10 to-do list that I mentioned. It was very long and I wrote that at the beginning of week 10. So I had a lot to do <laughs> in a very little time. So I never actually mentioned that you can see at the beginning of my project that I was going to use this app called Mental Canvas, but it actually stopped working on my iPad like between week five and six. I never mentioned it, but it just it still doesn't open. I think it just crashes as soon as I try and open it. It might be because my iPad's full but I couldn't do anything about it. I tried emptying it and it still didn't work, so I had to just ditch the idea of including 3D spaces in my project, and I decided to just do the physical comic. So as you can see here, at the beginning I showed you what my InDesign draft looked like with the line work that I had so far. It was a good way for me to see exactly how things looked together and to see what I might need to change in terms of how much it might flow together and also if I could cut any corners because <laughs> I did need to do that a bit. So after I did that I went ahead and finished up all the line work. It took a few days to do that. I used different references especially this website called Wildlife References or something like that for artists. It was a useful website. It had lots of photos of deer and wolves. So that was great. I also wasn't happy with my tower design that I showed in my last video so I redid it and like I thought about what the floor plan might look like because my idea is that it was like a castle or something in the past but now it's just ruins so I had to play with that and I like the outcome a lot more. <laughs> I also, there's a character that we are introduced to at the end of the chapter, so I had to figure out how he might look like. Uh, I used my brother's face <laughs> as a reference, which isn't very useful when you're trying to draw an old man. <laughs> so I was figuring that out and I was trying to simplify his face <laughs> so that it was good for the comic. So here now you can see I've got all the line work together except for one double spread which I did a bit a bit later because I was still wasn't sure what to do with it. But the rest is all done and you can see that I started colouring a bit, testing out how I wanted to put the colours in and what kind of colours I wanted to use. This was the first page that I finished colouring and I really liked how it turned out. So I went ahead and coloured the rest, which also took a few days. We all worked together on Discord, so it was nice to work with other artists at least, not being on our own. So I'm going to show a few Procreate time lapses of 
my coloring process. I won't show all of them, just a few. Uh, some of them I'm also showing you the line work process because that's just how Procreate exports it. Like it, you know, it it records everything. But I did do the line work beforehand, before these few clips, as I mentioned already. So yeah.
wasn't necessary to have a printed version, but we both really wanted to have, you know, like a physical product in our hands so that we can see what we've been working on for so many months. So we did that and then we had a little binding session. showing some of Rosemary's binding as well with her very pretty artwork. <laughs> it all I staple bound it and it looked really nice it came out really nice as well I was worried about the colors because it turned out that I had accidentally been working in RGB the whole time because procreate automatically sets colors to p3 which is a form of RGB so that was fun <laughs> but it, it looked fine in the end some of the colors were a bit saturated and some browns kind of turned into red but it's fine. I still really like how it turned out and it's nice to hold it in my hands. <laughs> oh, this is also Rosemary's very lovely comic book as well. to flip through the comic, show you pages and close-ups. As I said, I'm really happy with how this turned out overall. Obviously there are a few things that I wish I could change, such as this page, the two wolves on the left, I, just, I don't like. They don't look very, like they don't look like they're the same wolf. I also wish I had experimented more with figuring out how to color and texture the ruins, because I, was, I did that very last minute. I didn't think about it until like two days before the end of the project but it I think it looks okay I would obviously change it if I could I think when I carry this on during my final major project I'm definitely going to like gather more textures get more greenery so that I'm not using the same texture every time although I did like the way that it made it look a lot more cohesive and you can tell that oh that was the forest or you know these are trees 
so I'd have to have a think about that. But yeah, I'd definitely like to collect some more textures. I'll need to anyway, because for the next few chapters I'll have different subjects. I'm also going to show a flip through of my FMP sketchbook. This is a sketchbook that I started during the summer after my second year had ended. Um, it started off as just an observational drawing sketchbook, so I would take it to places that we visited or if I went out with friends to draw. But then the more I drew in it, the more I realized that it would be really good to use to practice for the PMP. So I took it everywhere with me whenever I went out to like castles or you know, any historic places, so I could draw subjects and objects that were relevant to my story and my comic. So I could practice and get some references and some nice drawings that I might be able to use in my projects. I also saved things like maps so that I could look at how villages or castles were laid out because my story is set like during medieval times or Tudor times so I liked having that reference. It was also a good way to practice my style and figure out what I liked best so I quickly figured out that I do really like line work over like really colourful or, or non-line work based artwork. So, and I think that shows in my final PMP. So that was my pre-major project. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I hope they were a good way to show my project and my body of work. I also really enjoyed filming and editing my process throughout this whole project. So I might do it again for my final major project. I hope my tutors are okay with that. <laughs> <laughs>